our dear viewers and listeners. We greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's Bible study. We invite you to invite somebody. So that we get into this word of God. And obtain value and be able to go that extra mile. The scriptures tell us that the entrance of the word of God brings light and brings understanding to the simple. So as we dwell into the word of God, your life will not remain the same again. As we begin today's session, from Dominion Church, International Beer. We ask you to humble yourselves. Let's dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you yes, Lord. for your presence here, mm. for the blessed opportunity to share Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, mm. that we should be ambassadors of Christ mm. in this day and age. Yes, even as we talk about you, King of Glory, mm. may you come alive in the hearts of the hearers. Yes, Cause change and transformation in their lives. Yes, Let Christ be exalted as the only Savior and King. Yes, and we believe that all is well because mm. Jesus is reigning. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We we'll go back to the book of Romans, chapter 6, from verse 12 to verse 14. The Bible says, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its last. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. This is a scripture that we began with last week. And to recap the number of things that we mentioned. Number one, when the Bible talks about you not letting sin to reign in your mortal body. That means sin has the capacity. Sin has the ability to rule. And the Greek word there is the word basileo. Which means to rule as a king. To exercise authority. The New Living Translation puts it this way. It says do not let sin control the way you live. So the narrative of your life should not be dominated by sin. But it says do not give in to its sinful desires. So what that means is that sin has a plan. It has an objective. And that objective is to control our lives. The way a monarch or a king rules over their kingdom. So it is now dependent on us as believers who have been justified by faith to now be able to resist, to now 
be able to prevent it from establishing itself in our lives. O kuzize chibi, o kuchiwa kanya, o kusimba makanda mubula mubwafe. Previously, the scripture had stated. Echa wandiki wacha yogeda. In 6.11, the scripture had stated. Esule yomukago nilwa kumi ne mwe chandiki wacha yogeda. That even so, consider yourselves. Mungeriye munamwe mufune ndo wozeo. To be dead to sin. Nti muafa erie chibi. In other words, come to a point in your life. Where you reckon yourself that you are dead to sin. But it is not enough. Now the Bible takes it to the next level. It's saying don't just tick the box. Now Put your action where your words are. So, so the command is squarely placed on us as believers. To continue this fight. Against sin. It is an ongoing fight. And where is it taking place? It is taking place in your mortal bodies. Mortal bodies. The word motto there is the Greek word thnetos. Thnetos means this body which is liable to die. Which will be subject to decay. Which will be subject to death. This is the place where the battle for holiness happens. This is the place where we pursue holiness on a personal level. And it involves our mind, number one. Our thoughts. It involves our eyes. It involves our ears. It involves our tongue. It involves our hands. It involves our feet. So the total motor body should be used in this battle. Remember you are regenerated. So what has become the new creation is the spirit. But this spirit is now dwelling in a mortal body. So this new person who comes now to live in a mortal body in a body that is subject to decay in a body that is subject to death this then turns out to be the point of weakness so it is here where the lusts come through. Where the desires come through. And it is now dependent on us not to give in to the sinful desires. In the immediate context, Paul was writing to the capital of the most sinful city in the world at the time. And this is the city of Rome. This is where idolatry had its Seat. This is where fornication and every immorality had its throne. Yet in spite of all that sinfulness, there was a church. And this church is what Paul is writing to. And he is telling them, do not give in. Do not yield territory. Hold on to what you have received. And this applies to us as well. In the time that we are living in, there is so much that is coming through. 
Binji bitu lumba. It's like every other day the devil is churning out one last after another. Bulijo star na ine chikulo kwe gomba chasi. There is a new innovation that is coming out of his factory. Bavu mbula bulichibi bulijo. And it is against that background. Kati mkutege ereko. That the scriptures come to us. Evi andi kwa jebize. And says do not obey its last. Nga bitu gamba temukiriza kwa kakwabu. Do not give in to its sinful desire. Temwe wa yoku tu ukirizo. And this comes in three phases. As given to us in 1 John 2 and 16. This last comes through the last of the eyes. The last of the flesh. And the last of sinful pride. Of life. Now when you look at the fall of man. In Genesis 3, this was the cause. When the devil tempted Jesus, in Matthew 3, and Luke 3 in the New Testament, these were the last he was pointing to. So we, as believers, need to be have our eyes wide open and ensure that we are standing our ground. So how do we do that? Paul says do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. I like the way the New Living Translation puts it. It says, do not let any part of your body to become an instrument of evil to serve sin. So, and the Greek word that is used there for instrument is the word hoplon. Now, hoplon simply means a military weapon or an item used in war. The understanding there is every part of your body that you let or you give in to become an instrument of evil becomes a weapon. So if it is your eyes that you're giving, those eyes now become the weapon of evil to serve sin. So if it is your ears and you're hearing all this filthy stuff, what is happening is that now your ears become weapons of evil to serve sin. If it is your hand, then your hands become weapons. If it is your tongue to utter blasphemies, it becomes a weapon of evil to serve sin. Even if it is your feet and you're going somewhere, they become weapons. So the Bible here is emphatic. It's saying do not present your members. It says do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. So here, the lusts are trying to coax us, to push us, to present whatever we have as instruments. So how do we do that? avoid that? Then having given us the two negatives, one do not give in. Secondly, he says, do not present members of your body. Now he gives us the positive presentation. And he tells us that we are to present ourselves 
to God as being alive from the dead and our members as instruments of righteousness to God. So we are to give ourselves completely to God. Why? Because previously we were dead to God. But when we are justified through faith, we now become alive to God and dead to sin. So now having died to sin, we now present the members of our body because it is the right thing to do. So we do it because we love the Lord. And the word present here is the Greek word paristeni. Paristeni picks its understanding from the Old Testament where the priest brought a sacrifice and placed it at the table. This is what Paul alludes to in Romans chapter 12 when he says, I urge you brethren by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God. Palestine simply means to place at one's disposal. So when we're talking about you presenting members of your body, if you're presenting them to sin, of to evil for an or to unrighteousness. Basically, you are presenting them to their disposal. You are literally saying, here my eyes, use them as you will. But now the Bible is calling us to present ourselves unto God. And having this understanding, he is telling us that you where you as being alive from the dead. So once you are spiritually dead, you are dead to God and alive to sin. What that means is that everything we did then, we were doing it to please sin. We are using it to please unrighteousness. But when we come to Christ Jesus, we then die to sin become alive to God. So now, having become alive to God, we now present the members of our mortal bodies unto God as instruments of righteousness. So, the, whatever we think, Whatever we are looking at, whatever we are hearing, whatever we speak, whatever we work with, our walk, everything is surrendered. And there are no two ways about it. That there is no middle ground here. Basically, in life, you are either pursuing evil all you are pursuing God. So every decision that you make it is either presenting the members of your body to God as instruments of righteousness or you are surrendering them to evil so that they serve sin. And we looked at the first aspect which is the mind. It is very critical 
ya nkizo that we surrender it to god chikuru na chotu chiweye katonda because if we do not then we are surrendering it over to the devil wotachi wa katondo obochi wa deye lista you are sending it over to evil ochi wa deye ri echi you are placing it at evil's disposal ochi wa deye echi bichi chikoze se so you saying you mean my mind what i think matters yes it does nebyendo woza bikuru twe wow look at what jesus tells us tunuli le bigambo bya in matthew chapter 5 matayo 5 and verse 20 28 concerning adultery Jesus makes this statement. He says but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. This is not a physical action. But having committed it in your mind, Jesus says it is done. So the eye became the point of access. You saw now it has entered the heart and it lays hold of your heart and jesus says you have committed it in your heart so what that means is that the eye is a gate to the heart that's why in verse 29 of matthew chapter 5 jesus further emphasizes and says if your right eye makes you to stumble pluck it out and throw it away for it is better that you lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. So when we present our eyes to God, we are making an effort to ensure that our hearts are aligned to God. So like produces like in this instance. What we gaze upon impacts our hearts. So if what you are looking at is pure, it is wholesome, it is edifying, then it will impact the state of your heart. If you are gazing at scripture, meditating upon scripture, this is what is going to be baked into your heart. Make no mistake. We cannot go through this life gazing at what does not glorify God. And then our hearts glorify God. The next thing so we've looked at the eyes we've looked at the mind. The third one is our ears. So what we allow into our ears has a direct impact on our spiritual growth. Where do we get that? Romans 10:17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So what we hear impacts our faith and then our faith grows proportionate to what we have allowed to come to us. So let me ask a question, what is it you are allowing in to your ears? See, if all you are allowing is words that come from the philosophies of men. If what you are allowing in is words that depict fear. This will stunt your spiritual growth. Spiritual growth is not a function of time. See, physical growth is a function of time. 
Omubiri go gukulu okusinzi da mumyaka. Every year you add another year to your years. Buli mwaka, buli mwaka okula. But that is not so with spiritual growth. Na yate sibwe chitio mumuoyo. Spiritual growth comes by hearing. Mumuoyo tukula okusinzi da kukulida. And allowing what we hear. Nga tukiriza vye tukulida. To change our perception, which you say, our action, to influence our walk with the Lord. And that is very important. So if you're keeping around people that are not using wholesome speech, don't think it is not adding anything to you. No, it is, it is adding something to you. It is preventing you from going forward. So we must present our ears to God. And guard what we allow to come into our mind. The fourth part of our body that we are to present is our tongues. We must present this as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. And nowhere is it depicted better than in James chapter 3. Look at what he says in verse 2. And he says, if anyone does not stumble, in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle this whole body as well. And in verse 5, he adds that the tongue is a small part of the body. Yet it boasts of great things. Basically, if we can control the tongue, then you can control the whole body. So the tongue is like the rudder of a ship. It determines the direction that it will go. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29, Paul writes and says, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such as a word that is good for edification, according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. In chapter 5 and verse 4, he further commands and says there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting which are not fitting but rather the giving of thanks. So which brings us back to what the psalmist said and we take back to Psalm 107 verse 2 it says let the redeemed of the Lord say so let the redeemed of the Lord use their tongues appropriately use their tongues to glorify God use their tongues to preach the gospel. Use their tongues to minister encouragement. Use their tongues to explain this truth of the kingdom. Why? Because as the tongue goes, so the whole body follows. The fifth thing we are to present at the feet of God is our feet. Our feet. So what about feet? 
Feet take us to places that affect our walk. Spiritually. They take us to where we hear the word of God. They take us to where we proclaim the gospel. There is that scripture, wonderful scripture in Romans. Chapter 10. Where Paul says, Oh, how beautiful are the feet of them that bring good news of good tidings. Romans 10.15 Our feet, when presented to God, now become beautiful feet. They don't get beautiful because you do a foot scrub. In the spiritual realm, your feet become beautiful when they carry the good news of good tidings. And the news, good news of good tidings is the good news of Jesus Christ. Which brings us to the question, do your feet take the message of the gospel to other people? Are, do your feet carry to places where you serve God? Or serve others? Of be an encouragement to some other people? Submit your feet. Present them. Pastaining to God. The sixth item that we must present is our hands. And our hands follow our feet. Our feet take us there. Then our hands begin to do the work. So remember Jesus again, Matthew 5.30. He says, if your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off and throw it away from you. So we must control how we use our hands. They must not be used to do what God forbids. We must be using our hands in a worthy manner. And Jesus says it is better that you lose one part of your body than for the whole of your body to go into hell. Again, there is another portion in scripture. Ephesians chapter 428. And it's says, therefore, he, he who steals must steal no longer. Rather, he must labor performing with his own hands what is good so that he will have something to share with one who has need. So these hands are to be employed in hard work. So whatever you are, whatever you are doing, you see, I take to these people who separate what they do from what is spiritual and what is secular. So there's for a believer in Jesus Christ. Everywhere you go, you are representing the kingdom. So at that place of work, where you are employed, you are Christ's ambassador. You are now presenting the elements of your mortal body, having taken them to 
presented them to God. They are then used as instruments of righteousness. Because Right there where you work. And the impact of that will be far reaching. Because you will be able to touch lives. Your hands will glorify God. So it will be like God is working within you. Both to do and to fulfill his good pleasure. So when we are putting our hands to useful work, that means we don't present them to be instruments of evil. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, from verse 11 to 12, this is what he says, is it make it your ambition to lead a quiet life and attend to your own business. Next line is important, and work with your hands just as we commanded you so that you you will behave properly towards outsiders and be not in any need. So you need to use this hand to work as you are supposed to do. I also take issue with a lot of people that I've met who say work is the result of sin. Work is not the outcome of sin. Before man sinned, when God created man in Genesis, he took the man that he had created and he prepared a garden. And then he placed the man that he had made into this garden and gave him explicit instruction. He told him to take care of the garden. He told him to tend it. What is God giving man? He is giving him work. So work did not come after the fall. Work came before the fall. Adam was working well before he ever sinned. So how do we use every faculty of our being? The last part of the verse 14 is what explains. We are not under the law. We are under grace. So all this is made possible because we are reigning under grace. God is at work in us. Like it is said in Philippians 2.13, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. God is at work within us both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So it is actually a work of grace that enables you as an individual to be able to present the members of your body unto righteousness. So this involves every part of your body in a practical way. What goes into your brain 
That must be presented to God. What you allow into your eyes, that must be presented to God. What you allow into your ears, that must be presented. Because it is a significant part of your sanctification. And the same applies to your tongue. The same applies to your hands. The same applies to your feet. And that is how we win. That is how we are able to live in a hell world and be able to stand apart from it. That is how we are able to demonstrate that though we are in the world, we are not of the world. That is how we are able to demonstrate that we we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. This is where it begins for every one of us. For everyone, it begins with you surrendering your life to Jesus Christ for him to become the personal Lord and Savior of your life. If you have never surrendered your life to Christ. This is the invitation we send to you. At this moment, surrender your life to Christ. Your sin will be washed away. God will give you a clean slate in life. He will declare you his righteousness. He will separate you from the devil. From sin and from the dominion of the world. He will separate you unto his son. And he will give you his spirit. And this is what will happen. By grace through the empowerment of the spirit. You now begin to present every member of your body. Not for unrighteousness, but to righteousness. Not to evil, so that it serves sin, but unto God, so that every part of your body brings glory to him. Why don't you say this prayer with me? And right in that moment, God will declare his righteousness and he will separate you from your past. Say this prayer with me. Say creator of the heaven and earth. Here I am before you a sinner in the need of your saving grace. Lord, I come before you with only one plea that I am guilty. I need a savior in my life. And that Savior is none other than Jesus Christ who loved me and he gave himself up for me. Jesus, yes. I surrender it all to you. My heart, my life, my everything is surrendered to your Lordship. I believe that you died for my sins and you rose again from the dead and are seated with the Father in heaven. Lord, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for giving me this new life. Now, if you made this prayer from the bottom of your heart, you have been saved. For we are saved by grace. It's not of our works. It's, it's not what you do. It is your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And now, God has declared his righteousness. So we now embark on this journey. 
Yes, filling you with the Holy Spirit. And in that moment, he's empowering you to present every faculty of your being. Those members of your mortal body. You are placing them at the altar. You are placing them at his disposal. That he uses them to give him glory. This is going to change your life forever. I would request you to call that number this time. Please tell them what has happened to you. And we we'll let's share this testimony. Let's celebrate what God has done in your life. This day. And for you, the believer in Jesus Christ, the journey for consecration, the journey of sanctification is a lifetime journey. Let's present our minds. Let's present our hearts. Our tongues. Our eyes. Our ears. Our hands. And our feet. And let them be used to the glory of God. God richly bless you as you hearken unto his word. And from Dominion Church, it's been a pleasure having you. Until we meet again next week. Say shalom. God richly bless you.